Andre and I were here on, on behalf of the board of directors of Rainforest Action Network. Uh, and I know that I speak on behalf of all of us when I say that we weren't just Becky's board, we were her friends. We loved her completely. And uh, I often uh, think about sitting on the board of RAN, one of the greatest perks of that position, of this position, was not only that I got to connect with the incredible staff and learn about all these fabulous campaigns and go to some great parties, but that I got to become a friend of Becky's. And I remember the first time she and I really bonding. It was about five years ago. We both uh, were speaking together at this event, and we were both really, really nervous. So we, we kind of hunkered down together. We had some sort of cocktail, of course, um, put on our lipstick. She practiced her notes. You know, we were both so nervous. And then she took the stage, and it was just like all of that fell away, and it was Becky. And I saw in her then, you know, what I think we have all seen all these years, just that incredible leader that, that she was. And uh, what I want to um, do uh, this evening is read from a poem by Maya Angelou. And it's a poem that I've actually been turning to a lot this past month. Uh, it was um, a poem I first heard at a memorial that we organized for the Nobel Peace Prize winner, Wangari Mathai. Uh, for those of you who don't know Wangari, she was an incredible uh, leader of a women's movement in Kenya, fighting for the forests. Uh, they planted as a movement more than 40 million trees. And Becky often reminded me of Wangari. Um, as I say this, I can almost hear Becky laughing and interrupting me, and in her sort of signature humble Becky way saying, Anna, are you comparing me to a Nobel Peace Prize winner? Come on. But, um, but it, it's true, they, they, um, there, was, there was so much about the two of them. They were both uh, incredible women leaders. Uh, they both had a deep understanding of the inextricable interconnectedness of human rights and the environment. Um, they both had a completely contagious laugh. And uh, they both didn't mind getting arrested for the right cause. So the poem is called, When Great Trees Fall, by Maya Angelou. And I'm hoping I can, I can get through it. When great trees fall, rocks on distant hills shudder. Lions hunker down in tall grasses. When great trees fall in forests, small things recoil into silence. When great souls die, the air around us becomes light, rare, sterile. Great souls die, and our reality, bound to them, takes leave of us. Our souls, dependent upon their nurture, now shrink, wizened. Our minds, formed and informed by their radiance, fall away. And when great souls die, after a period, peace looms. Slowly and always irregularly, spaces fill with a kind of soothing electric vibration. Our senses restored, never to be the same, whisper to us, they existed, they existed. We can be, be and be better, for they existed. Thanks, Anna. <laughs> Dawned on me as I was walking up here that when Randy Hayes and Mike Grozell put together Rainforest Action Network, Becky was 12 years old. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out what kind of magic alchemical thing happened that brought her to lead this in that moment, but there's no shortage of magic around the Rainforest Action Network, so it doesn't surprise me somehow. I have been a volunteer here for 21 years, and 
there are those of us on the board who've served like Randy for nearly three decades. This is a big, strong community of people who have a depth of experience and a depth of love for the Rainforest Action Network. Becky was the sixth ED in our history, and when she arrived on the scene as an employee, first as a lead campaigner, we had this sort of sense that, wow, there's somebody special here. It was clear that the place had been electrified by her presence. And then three years ago, when we were looking for an ED, we went, did, like all good boards did, we went through this search process, and we combed the universe for the right person, and all roads led back to Becky. And I remember convening our search committee at the end of this process. And we all looked at each other and said, well, you know, we've come to our conclusion that Becky's the right candidate. And then we realized that all of us have been wanting this so much from the beginning, that it was without hesitation. And we were all just waiting for everyone else to acknowledge it. It's ours. She was our choice. Um, the board and the staff were over the moon about Becky. This is what my mom always says. They were over the moon about her. So the last time she and I spoke, it was that board, chair, executive director lunch, our monthly lunch that we had for the last almost three years. And these are little rituals that they always, they, they start out a little bit stiff, but about two and a half years ago, they started to get very cozy and and we would look forward to them, and we would go to a restaurant, and we would take out the cocktail napkin, and we'd scribble on them, and we would debate this and that. And the last time we did it before Christmas, we allotted ourselves, you know, your traditional hour and a half. And three hours later, we looked up, and the bartenders are all, you know, wiping the glasses, and they're <laughs> wiping down the tables, and just begging for us to get out of here. And I looked up, and, I, and she looked at me, and she said, well, I guess we've got to get out of here. So we're walking out of the restaurant, and she said, by the way, thanks for having my back. And I remember thinking, you're thanking me for having your back. And I wrote to some of you that I, there is no place I would rather be than behind this woman in the wake of this superstar trying to make the world a better place. And I can tell you, with complete assurance that the board of, of RAND, the staff of RAND, all the people we have touched in Indian country, in First Native country, in Indonesia, in the Amazon, everywhere that RAND is, they've got Becky's back. Becky has their back. Unmistakable. So you're going to see a little snatch of video next, a piece of video that's partly a little bit of handheld and some beautiful, beautiful, high-quality shots. And you're going to hear a little bit of the speech that she gave last October, which was really her speech that we all think about as encapsulating this woman finally finding her voice. And in it, she refers to that wonderful quote from Martin Luther King, that the arc of the moral universe bends toward justice. And as she says it, I hope you'll do what I do, which I always imagine this rainbow, you know, starting from a few centuries ago and just the progress we've made. And it's going to land somewhere for all of us, somewhere that Becky wanted to land, we all wanted to land. And think about that stretch that she was responsible for. And then let's think together about what our charge is, which is to bring that rainbow home. So I'm extremely proud to be able to be the executive director of Rainforest Action Network, where every day I get to put my values into practice. Um, we're an organization that really believes that saving the rainforest and stabilizing the climate are absolutely fundamental to saving this planet and to really nourishing our souls. This isn't just about the external, this is also about the internal. I think all of us here know that. And what, you know, I have a lot of hope from working at RAN, and the one thing that really gives me the most hope is the network that we have. It's everything from indigenous people in Indonesia, 
all the way to working with folks in Appalachia here in the United States fighting coal, and it's all of you. And what a time it was, it was A time of innocence A time of confidence The bottom line is, we don't always know exactly what it is that creates change. We don't know exactly what it is. It takes everything from science all the way to faith. And it's the fertile place right in the middle of that. That spot where those things come together, that's where really exceptional campaigning happens. And that's where Rand strives to be all the time. We need to remember that it's bigger than climate change. Stay with me, people. I can see people going, oh my god, really? Really? We've been really, we've been really trying to stop climate change. I'm not saying that climate change isn't the most urgent and pressing thing we have to be dealing with. What I'm saying is that we need to be setting our sights higher and deeper at the same time. Because what we're really talking about, if we're honest with ourselves, is transforming everything about the way we live on this planet. Really. Yeah. We're talking about re-embedding the economy within the limits of nature. That's the project. And it's a really long-term one. It's transformational. Albert Einstein said that you can't solve a problem on the same level that it was created. You have to rise above to the next level. And I think that's a really beautiful quote for our times. You know, we really are in the midst of what will be the next industrial revolution. Joanna Macy calls it the great turning. And I say that it's, the evidence that it's happening is all around us if we care to look. You know, we did not stop human-induced climate change before it started. We lost that. But people, look around you. We are not losing. This is the year that 124 coal plants have been shuttered. This is the year that Iowa produces 20% of its electricity from renewable energy. This is the year that four people talked a $40 billion company into stopping sourcing any paper from the rainforest or in areas of social conflict. There are big things happening. And that is in no way meant to diminish the urgency of what we're trying to achieve. It is simply to say that we also need to pay attention to where we're winning. Martin Luther King said that the arc of the universe is long and it bends towards justice. And sometimes I don't think we can see it bend. Sometimes it sort of feels like it's flattening out. And then there's other times, like last week, when we saw what Disney did, that we can see that arc perceptibly bending towards justice, towards balance. Thank you all for being part of that. <laughs>